Philippines up three. One, two, three. We love you, Philippines. Woo! Tonight, Philippines. Tonight, Philippines. Woo! Tonight, live at the Scullery Theater from the fight capital of the world, in the heart of downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Mr. Dylan Jorgensen, Jillian Minter, Trey Talia Ferris, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest from Fashion Feed Las Vegas, Catherine Troy. Author of the novel Resurrection, Bill Wise Carter. And a magic performance by Larson Eisenberg. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who's never been down for the count, Mr. Trey Tayaferi! Yes, yeah! Ooh. Yeah, whoa, okay. Okay, Mom, calm down. How do you guys do today? We got a great show. You guys excited awesome, for this? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Exciting show, exciting show of you tonight. Fashion feed Catherine Troy is here today, yeah? yeah. Author of Resurrection, Bill Weiscarver is here today. Yeah. And to end the show, the mysterious Larson Eisenberg is gonna do some magic for us. This is good. Actually, he came, to our, he came to one of our meetings a few weeks ago and he did some tricks on us and blew my mind with this weird trick that he did. Do you remember that when he did yeah, that trick? Yeah, yeah, dope. He like did something, he said, text me something, text me a person's name. And then uh, he showed me his phone and said, did, did my, is that your number? Is that the text message? And it just said text message and he put it down. And then he's like, and he's like think of the name like it's, like it's on the Hollywood sign and that there's a, um, a spotlight going over it and then stop it. And then he's like, is the letter B? And I was like, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> and then he's like, did you say George Bush? And I was like, yeah, how'd you know that? And it freaked me out. So actually, and then later today, or earlier today at 7 o'clock, he, uh, he emailed me and it just said my prediction. Then he texted me and said, don't open that email. So it's going to be later on the show. I, he probably just has all my information on my phone now. <laughs> so look out for that later today. I he hope it's not think. George Bush again. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just said a big person now. I was trying to be tricky with George Bush. <laughs> um, so look out for that at the end of the show. I, I didn't open it. Um, I'm scared. I don't like when someone's in my mind or my phone, especially my phone. <laughs> don't swipe at my pictures. Yeah, clap for that. I don't know. So this week, um, Apple announced the new uh, Retina display for their MacBook Pros, right? Yeah? Uh, they said it's the best MacBook Pro they've made since the last MacBook Pro and will be the best MacBook Pro until they make the next MacBook Pro, which should be announced right after you buy this MacBook Pro. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apple also released prices and dates for their highly anticipated Apple Watch. The prices started at $350 and go all the way up to $10,000. Yeah. The watch can do things like tell time and tell people that you have too much money. <laughs> uh, are you guys gonna get the? Are you guys gonna get the Apple Watch? I don't know, Kyle. What do you think? You gonna get that? You got Apple. Yeah, I might get well. the Apple Watch. Uh, might be a little spy, you know. Yeah. James Bond stuff going. Kind of like Dick Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I when I saw Dick Tracy, I always wanted to talk on my phone, but now I'm like, uh, make ignore. Yeah, I don't want to talk to those <laughs> bill collectors. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, the fight of, that all of downtown Las Vegas has been waiting for, Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao, will happen in Las Vegas May 2nd. The purse for this fight could reach up to $300 million, which makes this the most expensive fight since the Iraq War. <laughs> Tickets for the event are expected to range from $1,500 to $7,500. But with StubHub service charges, the total will be about $13,000. <laughs> Actually, I, I wanted to talk about Mayweather's entourage. Have you guys seen his entourage for his fights? Take a look at it right here. Right here, this is his entourage. Lil Wayne and Justin Bieber. What's Bieber doing in here? Me, I don't know, I don't know. Nothing says I'm gonna beat you up like, baby, baby. <laughs> so, um, I think that May, or, uh, Pacquiao needs to up his entourage. Yes. And since we are kind of huge in the Philippines. We are, we are. And he's Filipino. Right. I'm basically the Bieber of the Philippines. Not to brag. <laughs> yeah. Manny, I know you're listening. I know you're watching the show. I know you're a big fan. You tweet all the time. Put me in your corner. I'm there. 
I'm good, I'm funny. I'm not like ha ha funny as you can see, but like I'm not gonna take tension away from the fight. Uh, I'm good at massages, yeah. <laughs> also, I also have my own entourage. Look at this, this, hey. this one entourage right here. Hey. Nothing says tough. <laughs> tough guys. Tough guys. Two, two bald guys in your corner. You'll always win, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got a great show for you guys tonight, as I said earlier. But first, let's hear it for DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. <laughs> Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to the Downtown Podcast. We want to welcome our first guest tonight. It's founder and CEO of Fashion Feed Las Vegas Magazine, the spotlights local business and trendsetters, and helps the whole city embrace a more stylish lifestyle. You can flip through the March issue magazine now at Fashion Feed LV. Let's welcome Kat Troy. All right. <laughs> welcome, Kat. Hi. Welcome to the show. Have a seat. Well, thank you for coming on. Now, you just released your March issue, correct? Uh, last first Friday, March 6th. And it's a digital publication. It is. For now, we are really trying hard to get it printed, but um, maybe in the next six months. But yeah, there's a lot in the issue. We did um, WWD Magic coverage, Fashion Week Las Vegas coverage. We did an editorial with Exile Boutique. Anybody shop oh, there? I love them. Actually, yeah. I love them. Right next to Cowtown Guitars, yes. right? Yes. And then we published an editorial from um, K-N-Y-E-W. Anybody? Kill, you, yeah. kill yourself. Or, no, that's, no, that's um, the other one. New oh. York everywhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot in it. We did an eight-page article about Stitch Factory and four of their new members. So you do so, a lot for the local community. Yeah, we love it. There's so much going on here. We have more than enough content to publish a monthly fashion magazine. I right mean, it's on. about time Las Vegas has their own fashion magazine. Yeah. It is about time. I think, yeah. And Las Vegas has been a huge fashion mecca for up-and-coming designers and fashionistas alike. And yep. speaking of, you're wearing a dress by who? Yeah, it's, um, okay, I'm gonna stand up real quick. Yes, please this, do, I'm this dying. is really this cool. Dress, like, I'm dying, this dress is amazing, I think. And it's not mine, I had to borrow it, but um, look, it says, yes. It's um, a girl that's a senior in high school now named Hu Lin Chen, and um, she won a competition last year called Fashion Forward, which is put on by the Junior League of Las Vegas. And um, their actual, um, this season competition, their final runway challenge is gonna be this Saturday at the Fashion Show Mall at 6.30, I mean at 2 p.m., I'm sorry, 2 p.m. So there's gonna be 60 um, contestants showing their final design. So this wasn't actually a winning design last year. The girl that won last year, Hulin, was able to make an entire line that they then sold at Artifact in Town Square. So it's open so, to the public. So yeah. audience members can go this Saturday yeah, and can, actually be a part of the runway show yeah. and watch it, right? You can buy tickets on the runway um, at the Junior League of Las Vegas website, or you can just go to the fashion show mall and like lurk up on that second balcony and watch the whole thing. And, and it's, either way. Try. it's all high schoolers, high yeah, school students and finalists. seniors. Yeah, and they've been working on this since uh, I believe like September. So they had to do an elimination round. It was put on through the whole Clark County High School District. So there were like hundreds of girls that were in this competition. Super talented. I think freshman through senior. So yeah, we'll see the 60 final design. We love what you do for the community. Yeah. And you also keep us up to date on trends, fashion trends. And one of them <laughs> you were talking about, you started a hashtag called Man Bun March, correct? Yes. And I'm really excited about this because I like, you know, man buns and I like the, I like when guys wear pants that are just like, you can kind of see it like tight, but not too tight. So I've been hashtagging this and really like butt pics. I'm sorry to let you down, but we're actually talking about the hairstyle. Uh, no, I knew it could go either way, but I was sure it was like fashion. Like That would be amazing too. So the hair, like where men put their hair in the bun. Yes, and I'm not the one that noticed it. My staff, which is sitting, some of my staff is sitting right here. My editor in chief, Steven. Yay! Um, and then my fashion editor, Asia. And then our stylist and makeup artist, Kat. Well, I was afraid it was going to go this direction. So, you know, I'm going to challenge you to guess that celebrity man bun. Oh my God. It's right behind you. Oh and okay. if you guess wrong, you have to take a shot. But if you guess right, I'll take the shot for you. Okay. Okay? So let's start with the first one here. Okay. 
Bring it. Guess that man bun. Okay. Um, that looks greasy. Um, it could be Russell Brand, maybe. Okay. Oh! Yes. Okay. Yes. I guess that's me. Amazing. Cheer. Anybody can sip with me in the audience. That's fine. <laughs> if anybody here is wearing a Woo. man bun tonight, Stephen might cut it off, just to <laughs> warn you. <laughs> okay, next one. Okay. I hope you get this wrong. Okay, that is obviously Jared Leto. Because oh, he wears yeah. it like that part. Yeah, that's part like part a low bun, a low man bun. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's so handsome. Bring it on, I got this. I got this. All right. Oh. Okay, I have no okay, idea. Okay, please get this wrong. I don't know who that is. It's a bad man bun, though, that man Oh. It's like a mini <laughs> yeah, it's like bun. A... Trying, okay. But okay. It's okay, a so it's a bunny. show who it is. Oh, what? That's wrong. Oh, that's wrong. it's all you, girl. Oh, it's a baby bun. It's a baby bun. <laughs> it's like a baby bun. It's a baby bun. You can do this, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, they're potent. I can't do it all. No, I know. Our bartenders here really pack a punch. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, you have one more. Okay. <laughs> Focus. Um, Who um, is that man bun? Maybe Brad Pitt? Scruffy. Is that your final answer? Yes, that's my final answer. All right. No. Oh, in your face! Oh. It's Leonardo DiCaprio. In your face. Oh, that's a bad man bun, too. All right. Now, we want to stay in style here at the podcast. Yes. And uh, we just, you know, got one of our hosts. On trend? And, yeah, we want to stay. Come on. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So, would it be kosher for him to continue to wear this? Yeah, I think you should. You should shave your sides, though. Okay. And then, like, start doing yoga all the time and wear, like, flannel shirts. Got it. Done. Okay. Yeah, Don't you're... put Willie on your resume. <laughs> Got a lot of potential to rock the man bun. I'm impressed. Well, thank you so much for being such a good sport and hanging out with us. And we're going to keep following you and keep reading everything Aww, fashion. And we're going to do exactly what you say, so be careful. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> How can we find you on social media and just to read your digital magazine? Yes, um, Fashion Feed LV. Dot com at fashionfeedlv and Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and then our link for the digital issue will be on all of our social media. So yeah, please follow us. We would love right to on, right have you hang out with us. Very good. Check out the issue. Awesome. Woo! All right. Woo! Thank you. Oh, they were. I can. Yeah. That's awesome. You guys are awesome. I love you so much. All right, so our next guest is a former U.S. Marine who spent two decades in Washington, D.C. doing national security before starting a merchant bank. <laughs> now, he's drawing from these experiences. He decided to write an entire trilogy. It's called Resurrection, and it's a series of novels that tackle government, Wall Street, and the financial crisis. So please... Put your hands together for author Bill Wisecarver. Okay, we are excited. Actually, oh, I'm gonna scoot this chair a little closer. Are you kidding? You've got cool oh, conspiracies to talk about. You've got to be eye uh, contact. Right? That's, that's how I tell the people who buy into me, right? That. I know. We got to get into that right away. All right. So first off, let's talk about this book, Resurrection. Why did you write it? Basically, I wrote it because I, uh, as a reaction to what I was watching on the news and uh, watching on uh, the, talking to average Americans, especially those under 35, you know, they, they, they were saying to me, somehow the sound bites that we were getting, they're not making any sense to me and they're not adding up. Uh, because of my background, because of where I've been and some of the things that I did, I said, I'm going to start writing. So I did. And the first time I did, I tried to do a, uh, a history of America. Uh, post-World War II. And then I was diplomatically told that that was about as interesting as a math high school textbook. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be. I, I mean, there, it's a great uh, history, uh, but yeah, it's hard yeah, to do you know, it right. 25 it's years okay. in the national security infrastructure, that's, that's what it does to you. So basically what I did was I took, uh, I took that, I went back to the drawing board, and um, I came up with the resurrection. And resurrection is basically, if you know the movie Fight Club, Oh, of course, and yeah. Wrap Brad that Pitt. up. Wrap that up in the Matrix. Number and one then, thing that we're talking about. And then it book. follows the plot line of, um, of probably the greatest philosopher of the 20th century, Jimi Hendrix. Oh, and, yeah. and his book. <laughs> and, and, I was going to say Michael Dave yeah, Montaigne, yeah, but, you know, it could be Jimmy. But, uh, but uh, his, his work of uh, Up From the Skies, Axe as Bold as Love, second yeah. track, first side, 
Which shows you how old I am. No. <laughs> <laughs> show us your man bun. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's one of the pleasures of being, uh, being, uh, being this old, man. I just I can't get okay. there from here. Okay, so would you say this book is full of conspiracies? Not really. Um, what it does is, what it does is, it, it blows the myths of the zeitgeist um, that's surrounding us. Um, if you really want to, and, and see, you can get real serious on this, um, but the fact of the matter is, is that we are living in a new age, in the birth of that new age. That age started about 115 years ago, okay? It was, uh, the br there was a breach in the birth for about 50 years in the worst war that human history has ever seen, okay? But it's exploded now, it's come out. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, the powers that be, the economic infrastructure, the political process that we know today, they're using 19th century geopolitical and um, economic theories to try to run a world and yeah. especially take the opportunities that our new generation has, that, that this generation, the follow-on generations are so, going to have. Okay, so I know this, uh, this, is a, this is the first of a trilogy. It's a long book in itself, but it has a lot of different topics. But if you could narrow it down kind of to the top, so let's say three main topics that you think people should really be thinking about, what would they be? It, it's really about the political process itself. Um, and the fact is, is that when people say it doesn't add up, you're right, it doesn't. Now, what's the next step? The next step is critical thinking. This is why I called book one, Americans Awaken. What I tried to do is just go straight across the board and show where, how to start that process of critical thinking, how to wake right. up to what's going on around us. Make up your own decision and your own mind, and then get out there and find the people. Um, you know, uh, find the people that are going to bring you to a new, uh, that new level, that new step. Bring in those alternative theories. Okay. Bring in the new leadership. You Jump know? on your social media account, right? Kyle, can you rally up a revolution or anything <laughs> while we're hanging? <laughs> I mean, I try. Okay, but anyways, um, so tell me about uh, some of the things that, like some of the main topics in the, in the yeah. world. And one of them is uh, I blow kind of the myth of uh, high frequency trading, HFTs. Oh, right, right, I mean, right, right. Basically what you're talking about there is that they have, mainly through the options market, They've basically divorced the stock market from any economic reality that we're dealing with. And that's why people are sit sitting there going, they can't understand it. We're, we have more Americans falling into poverty today than, than in our history. We have people lowering their standard of living, but everybody's saying, oh, the economy's doing great. Well, the HFTs are basically microscopic arbitrage of, of without any divorce from the intrinsic value of the stock itself, and it follows the globe at the speed of light. It's mm. computerized trading, working at the nanosecond. $1.7 trillion is going from New York, then it goes to Tokyo, then it goes to Hong Kong, then it goes to, then it goes to Singapore, uh, Mumbai, Bahrain, Frankfurt, London, you know. And, and money's and, world travel. And, and, yeah. it's, and it is doing it's that 24 hours a day. Yeah. And it's what is doing? To Tijuana. I don't even know. Yeah. Oh, man. You can get okay. all kinds of trouble. Okay, so I don't, I don't, like, there's a lot of topics that brings up, but you're talking about sort of the important thing being that the general population should have better critical thinking skills and they should try to focus on that. Um, like, for the audience, for all of us, like, what, what does that mean? Because I know I get my news from, you know, CNN sure. or a local newspaper, but like, what should I be doing if I want to be more of a critical when thinker? You hear, uh, when you hear something that doesn't make sense, you're probably right. And, and now, with, in the information age, you know, go to Wikipedia, go and look at it for yourself. We have to start demanding from our political leaders, not sound bites anymore, but real issues, uh, solutions that are going to help us, going to change our way of life. Because those solutions are out there. We have the money, we have the most advanced civilization in, in human history. Um, we have everything going for us. We have the most well-educated, highest standard of living, greatest uh, people here right now in this country, and we, it doesn't have to be this way. Right. I mean, as an example, we're spending 100, or for about seven years, we spend $120 billion a month to fight tribal warlords sitting in the mountains um, uh, who seem to be, uh, the only thing that they want to do is drive their people back into the 13th century. Right. Okay, why aren't we spending that money on uh, alternative energy generation? Right. How, why Fix the infrastructure of the country? Exactly. Why, of how much are we doing that? How much yeah. are we? How much are we putting into education? I will say that bugs me. Yeah. I've thought about yeah. that a few times. I mean, like, 
So, but that's just well, it. What do we do? Like, I don't know what to do. Like, I vote for people. Like, am I supposed to vote or am I supposed to? We like, have to demand from demand our, our political leaders. Or, like, we have to. We, you know, I mean, you, basically, we have to. We have to demand from our political leaders. I mean, it's just as an example in this coming election. Okay. Okay. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care if it's Democrat, uh, Republican, if you're liberal, conservative. What you need to say is, we want a firm commitment from you that we are going to reestablish the financial regulatory environment that we had had for about 100 years before that you guys nullified in 2000, up to, uh, from about 1990 to 2002. Mm. Okay? Do that one thing, just, just that one thing. And things will start falling. Uh, falling Cause like, cause place. I, like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be angry. You know, like I don't want to be like, oh, I'm always so upset with everything, and like writing a letter. But also, like I want like things to be cool. So what should I do? Yeah. Well, if you you want things to be cool, <laughs> I, you know, no, no, I, and I, I totally understand. But the way for it to be cool is being serious. Doesn't mean that you have to be mad or be yelling mm. and screaming. Okay. Okay. I like where you're going. Now. You just need to understand what's going on. You know. I lived in a world that was extremely serious for a long time. Right. You know, um, but I'm not in that world right now. I'm still that serious dude. You know, I can't help it, man. It's uh, you know, yeah. like Popeye said, I am what I am. You know, but but by the same token, uh, I have you know, I have fire and passion about that. You know, but go out and look at it, research the stuff. You know, it okay. doesn't it doesn't have to be mad and screaming. Because it's not about a revolution. It's about evolution. It's about waking up to the opportunities that are before us and understand that it's a very small group of people that are keeping us from our own opportunities, from our own society, from the production of our own, our, our own uh, minds, everything else. OK. All right. So, and, uh, so very last question. We'll have to talk about this book in a second and then end it. But you said something about global warming. It's not really about the conversation. Do you want to expand on that? Per perfect example. You, you have you have basically three myths in global warming. The first one is, is that, well, it's not happening. Get over it, guys. Every scientist has, has looked at it. It is. We see it with our own eyes. It is. The, the next one is, there's something that humans can do to change it. Guess what? Entire human civilization has come, has basically raised in the, in the current environmental epoch that we're in, about the last 13,000 years. The planet has decided that we're changing that. And some little species running around on the crust of it isn't going to be able to change it. And that's happening. So the, and that hides the biggest myth of all. And that gets back to where the, where the, the, the political process is investing. Okay? We need to invest in new infrastructure, new technology. We could revamp our entire economy by just having, we're going to have to move New York. We're going to have to move New Orleans. We're going to have to move Los Angeles. You know? we're, going to have, we're going to have to do this. And this is, these are the things that we can start doing right now. But we can't do it while you have seven of the top banks that own 75% of the productive right. assets of this country. This you can't do it kind of thing, while yeah. the federal government is basically investing in one, just one, weapon system that's going to cost a trillion dollars. Okay. Uh, it ain't well, happening, man. Yeah, no, you're right. And I'm sure we can talk longer about it, but I recommend everybody reads this book. So you wrote it in sort of a fictional tense, but it addresses real topics, stuff that you can relate to. So everybody, where can they check out this book or buy you, themselves You a can copy? pick this up at, uh, at uh, Amazon.com. It's on Kindle. Um, you know, we're, we're running around, and, and I, want people to, I want people to read the book. I want people to get back to me, visit me on Facebook, visit me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, you know? You think I'm wrong? Please tell me. Tell me why. You know, yeah, if you, right. if you, you get, get the conversation started, exactly, right? start the debate. Man. Right. Let's all join together. You know. Seems like a good conversation to have. So thank you very much for coming and starting. Thanks. 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 guest is a magician who has graced the stage everywhere from corporate events and bar mitzvahs to the legendary Magic Castle in Los Angeles. He's here tonight to wow us with some sleight of hand, and he's also in my contacts already. He's got my information. I don't like him. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please keep your eyes on Larson Eisenberg. Oh, the magic door. How's it going? Thank oh, you. I'm out Okay. Do, do I need it? 
Do I need the good luck? Is that, I'm scared. All right. So, <laughs> how's everybody doing? Good, good, good. Um, yes, magician ever since I was probably around eight years old. So I've been doing this a little bit now. Uh, specialty, cards. Am I going to do an entire deck of cards? Because people say you're not playing with a full deck. That'd be true. Only four cards. Okay. Keep your eye. It's more of a game than anything else. You've got to follow the one card that's different than all the other cards. So that'd be the six of hearts. What position would you say the six is in if you had to make a guess? No reaction. This is going to be fun. Second, second from the top. Exactly. Yes, yeah, second from the top. If I count the cards like this, what position is the six in now? Second from the bottom. If I count them again like this, second from the top. Thus the game is played. If I turn the whole pile over, where is the six now? Second from the bottom. If I count them again like this, where is it now? And unless I cheat, which sometimes I do, and if my wife found out, she'd kill me. It's actually on the bottom. So you guys are going to be tough. All right, so the six will leave that face up amongst the cards. That's the six is the only one you have to follow. I'm going to step back a little bit. If I give the cards a twist while we're playing the game, don't make sure that I don't do that. Because if I do that, the six turns face down. The jack is now face up. Ooh. We'll start from the beginning. We'll start from the beginning. Leave all the cards face down, right? Remember, make sure that I don't give the cards the twist. Because if I twist the cards, you see the six turns face up. Now, the six is what we call in magic a pip card, P-I-P. -I -P. These are called court cards. If you were watching me close enough, you actually would have caught the entire thing. You would have caught me red-handed, right? Now, that's our show tonight. Thank you guys for coming. We'll see you next week. We love you. Cool stuff, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was